Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhad, and today we'll be discussing how to perform an MR ultrasound fusion guided prostate biopsy using the Euronav device by Invivo. Before we begin, there's always a few disclaimers. This video is for educational purposes only. It allows our physicians to review material after attending one of the hands-on courses. It's not to be used to direct patient care or a substitute for actual hands-on training. This video is not to be reproduced, copied, and or distributed without my written consent. How does fusion work? Well, it's based on three components. The MR imaging, the software which combines the ultrasound and the MR images using surface rendering techniques, electromagnetic tracking, which allows for real-time ultrasound imaging within the 3D space to target and track the device. What is fusion? In its simplest terms, it's the ability to combine two data sets together, one your ultrasound is seen on the right and the MRI on the left, and will it able to overlay these in 3D space. We use the benefits of the MRI with its high sensitivity and specificity for detecting prostate cancer, and the ultrasound for its easy use and ability to do real-time imaging. It allows us to gun guide, track, and record biopsies in 3D space. How do the data sets get combined? Well, using the information from the MRI, a mesh or surface rendering is performed, and the same procedure is done on the ultrasound image. And then we're able to match these up. How are they matched up? With contours. See these small triangles overlaying the surface of the object? These small triangles are unique to each data set. And then we try to match them together in the best fit scenario. That's how the two image data sets are placed together to allow for fusion biopsies. A little bit simpler. See image one, the dotted yellow box, and image two, the blue solid box? Well, these two data sets are not aligned. But after registration on the right side of the screen, you're able to see where the two data sets line up. Those dots, the blue and the black circles, those are similar to our triangles, where we're trying to line them up as best as possible to allow for co-registration between the two image data sets. As with all surgical procedures, it's always important to review the images prior to the procedure. See here is the prostate MRI. There's an anterior left apex lesion. You want to determine its relation to the urethra. And during fusion, if you're moving around and examining the MRI and the ultrasound, you look for BPH nodules, see if they line up during the procedure. Cysts, calcifications, and as, as I mentioned before, the urethra is always a helpful landmark. So the basics, I will review how to position the patient as well as the ultrasound and the Euronav device for a one-person and a two-person operator setup. We'll also review how to assemble the probe, the tracker, the clip, and the needle guide as one unit. So the beginning, this is a two-person setup, but what's important here is the patient positioning. A patient should be positioned the left lateral decubitus position with his hips and knees bent at 90 degrees. This allows you to keep the hips square for easy fusion and optimizes your sweep. As I showed you in the previous slide, the two-person setup, this is a little bit easier to see. It's important to understand that we have the patient in their square position. The field generator is positioned over their hip. The ultrasound machine is within reach for the physician to perform his diagnostic prostate ultrasound. And the tech stands to his left. He controls the Euronav device, does your corrections, and helps you through the procedure. And of course, our specimen table here at the base of the bed. Another example of the two-person setup, this is typically what Dr. Pinto uses at the NIH. They position the Euronav device across from the physician so he does not have to rotate his neck to look at the screen. The tech also here runs the Euronav device. This is an example of the one-person setup. This is typically what I do in my office. My ultrasound machine, my Euronab, I'm able to access without moving. I use foot pedals to control the procedure to freeze the screen and mark and track biopsy cores. My assistant helps me place the specimens in the cup. Since we're able to operate the Euronab and the ultrasound with one user, we do not need a tech to assist with the procedure. In the beginning, I think it's important to have help when you're learning, but as you become more facile with equipment, it's very easy to perform the procedure by yourself. So what's the setup look like? We're gonna review how to put the tracker together as well as the probe. 
This is an example of my back table setup when I perform the procedure in interventional radiology. We have two biopsy needle guns as well as two syringes for lidocaine. We use two biopsy needle guns to allow us to perform the biopsy while the second person is removing a specimen off the first needle. This does help save a little bit of time. This is an example of the tracker setup. We have our needle guide, our clip, and our GPS tracker. What's really important is when you seed these devices together, there should be an audible click when you're able to put the tracker in. Each ultrasound hub has its own unique tracker setup, but they're all pretty much the same. The important thing is the audible click. This must be stable and not movable at all because this is how your probe is tracked. First, we begin by using a non-lubricated latex condom. We use these instead of the Civco condoms because they're much thinner and they're able to lock the equipment over them. The tracker hub or the clip must seat on perfectly. If this is loose, it can cause errors in your fusion. As well as the Civco needle nut guide, it must click on and be perfectly stable, as seen here. This is the first screen. I call this a pre-biopsy check. What's important here is once you start your biopsy procedure, on the left, you have your region of targets. In this case, we have a scar that was marked by the radiologist, a right anterior transition zone lesion, as well as a left mid peripheral zone lesion. But that's not what's important. What's important in this screen, the first thing is to click this red button. This is the record button. This will keep track of everything that goes on during the procedure. If there's any discordant pathology, you can always go back and review what happened. The images obtained during the biopsy itself, the screen captures, don't really represent how well you did in targeting the lesion. So please remember to hit this button. It really helps learn and it will shorten your learning curve. Again, this is the first screen you see when you enter the biopsy process in Euronav. Our first step is always to check the MR segmentation because this is what the alignment is based on. Also to check, during the procedure, you can see that your recording with a pause button is seen here. Again, we check each one of our lesions. As seen here, we have a scar that was labeled by the radiologist, a right anterior PZ lesion, as well as a left mid lesion. This is very important to check because you cannot go forward if there's errors in your segmentation of your MRI. You need to fix that in the Dynacad before you proceed, or you're gonna limit the ability to target effectively. This is the next screen you see after you perform your segmentation and targeting check. Notice how this is a depth of five, and this is 7.1 over here. It's important that both these numbers line up before progressing to the next screen. Once they are the same depths, you'll notice that the needle line, the red and the gray overlap. If you had to adjust this, you can left mouse click and move this box left to right to have it adjust. Notice that this is on a loop, so you can see when they're not aligned and check this before you begin. In the upper right is your electromagnetic field. This is checking to see if your tracker is in an optimal place for the procedure. Here represents a type of ultrasound probe you're using and how many uses you have left on your tracker. Once this is all complete, this color is green, which means optimal tracking is occurring and you've selected the depth from your biopsy needle. Typically, once this is done once, you set the depths and you move on. But in the beginning, I just want you guys to understand what's happening in each step. Once you've completed the setup for the procedure, the next is the most important thing. In this screen in the upper right is our ultrasound sweep. I sweep from the apex to the base in a slow, even fashion. You need to go at the same pace because the computer doesn't recognize how fast the probe moves. So you need to do an even sweep. And then you're able to review the transverse images that are created. We mark the right, left of the prostate, the anterior and the posterior to help the computer with segmentation. You can actually skip this part and just click the segmentation button. But to follow the instructions for the course today, I am following each step. Also, if you notice, I didn't click the apex to base sweep when I did the sweep, and that's why the apex appears over here. If I clicked it correctly, my apex would have been over here. 
It doesn't matter when you do it, but it's important to understand what happens if you don't click the button in the same direction you make your sweep. Here you see the purple line highlights what you're stretching the model to make it line up. If you look, this is relatively easy. The automatic segmentation captured almost the entire prostate. See how I fix it? The red areas where I'm warping the image to make it fit. The green outline is the, matches the red outline that you saw on the MRI segmentation. Well, this is the co-registration screen. Typically, I would only use this to line up the ultrasound and the MRI for my fusion. If you're going to use elastic warping, you must use these three static screens and line up the MR ultrasound fusion image to perform elastic warping. The calculation is based on how well the green and the purple lines, the ultrasound and the MRI images line up together. You can use blend to just remove the MRI overlay. Currently, it's calculating the elastic deformation algorithm to make the ultrasound and the MRI fit together. This takes uh, approximately 40 seconds or so. The next version takes only about two, two to three seconds. But it's still important to always remember checking your depth during the procedure and make sure that you line up this anterior border with the MRI segmentation. Well, this is the biopsy screen. This is where all the stuff happens. If you look over here, you can tell your axis, but the most important is the first step. You click on the rotational adjustment after you're happy with the fusion. You correct in the zero degrees, and then you rotate to 180. Why do we do this? With ultrasound probes, when you rotate, there's a slight off axis in the left-right direction, which we mathematically correct for by performing this rotational adjustment. Once you rotate to 180 degrees, it says freeze. You're able to adjust the MRI, click apply, and then close. So now your fusion is set. Notice the outline. Watch the prostate the whole time. I adjust my pressure posteriorly, but I'm always checking the anterior border of the prostate. This is extremely important. This is how we're able to perform targeted biopsies with prostates that are maybe not exactly the same as the MRI that was obtained. The better your MRI, the better the pictures will look in the bottom screen. And also, if your MRI is not scanned and in a perpendicular to the posterior border of the prostate, you're going to be off angle. Therefore, the, the reformatted images will not be as sharp as your axial MRIs. So MRI acquisition during the biopsy is extremely important. Notice during the procedure, I'm constantly checking, rotating my hand. This is why I prefer end fire, because you're able to look sagittally and axially with just rotating your hand. If you use a dual planar probe, you have to readjust your pressure because the crystals are not in the same place. Notice the hypocoke area shows up here, matching up with the MR ultrasound fusion image. And one thing I'm not showing here, which is just as important as the targeting screens that you see now, is the raw ultrasound image. It's always important to look at the raw ultrasound image during the procedure. It is extremely helpful because sometimes these regions of interest that are colored on the screen make it difficult to see. Notice the needle comes in here. I'm going directly through my ROI. The needle tip stops up here. You're able to adjust the needle and record where the biopsy was taken. I am doing this by myself, so therefore I'm holding my probe. I have hit the freeze button on the foot pedal, and I associate the image. I do this with my left hand. I hold the probe with my right hand. Now we're in the sagittal view. I just rotated my wrist 90 degrees to get this other image. I think it's really helpful to see. Again, I'm able to put the needle in right below the hypochoic area, see the target directly through it. I restore my image, but it's always important to see. Typically, when you take a picture and freeze this frame, sometimes it doesn't really represent what your biopsy looked like. That's why I really like the videos. It's very important. Down here in the lower right screen shows you how your probe is in relation to the prostate. Are you perfect, perfectly axial or are you slightly rotated? It helps you so you can adjust your wrist so you can watch this. This view is showing all three regions of interest, the scar, the uh, left mid peripheral zone lesion. Again, you're seeing a hypocoke area with this region up here. 
the ROI seems to obstruct your view a little bit. I would be using the raw ultrasound image to optimize my biopsy approach. Again, you see me constantly moving, checking to make sure the fusion is right. I adjust the pressure with my probe, and I typically use the lateral and anterior borders of the prostate uh, for my fusion confirmation. And watch, this is a tricky spot. If, you're, if you don't rotate and kind of undershoot, you may have the pro needle bounce off the prostate Well, you'll miss the prostate altogether. I thought this was an interesting case because it covered a lot of different aspects of the procedure. In summary, the imaging is everything. Your MR imaging has to be optimized for a fusion biopsy. The axial slices need to be perpendicular to the uh, posterior border of the prostate between the apex and the mid gland. This allows you to perform ultrasound fusion and not have that much reformatting between that axial image and your ultrasound image. So you can use the MRI during the procedure. I gave you a little bit of facts about the technology and how to understand how segmentation works and how the segmentation of the MRI and the segmentation of the ultrasound gives you surface rendering and how we match up those two data sets. So that's why it's so important to do a good sweep because you save time because the automated ultrasound segmentation maybe requires no correction. You can go to the next step. But if you're going to be using elastic warping, you need to make sure that it is perfect because that's how the MRI is warped into the ultrasound image because that is the truth at that time. Always use those internal fiducials. Look for the urethra, BPH nodules, calcifications, things that can help you guide you on your way to getting to that lesion. And always observe the biopsy. I showed you guys how to record the images, which I think is the, one of the basics and most fundamental things you can do to improve your skills at this procedure is keep recording and reviewing all the cases. Thank you so much for attending this lecture on how to perform an MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy using a Euronav device. My name again was Dr. Art Rastenhat. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions at my website or at Twitter at Dr. Art Rastenhat. Please stay tuned to our YouTube channel for updated videos and other discussions. Again, thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation.